Hey, this is Presh Talwalker reminding you to mind your decisions. The William Lowell Putnam Mathematical Competition, often called the Putnam Competition, is an annual exam for undergraduate college students in the United States and Canada. You have three hours to solve a set of six problems for an average of 30 minutes per problem, and then you have another three hours to solve another set of six problems. So the test is six hours long for 12 questions. Each question is worth 10 points for a maximum of 120 points. The test has legendary difficulty. The average median score is about one point, even though the students taking the test are highly accomplished. No calculators are allowed on the test, and you have to prove your answers to earn points. The problem in this video is adapted from the 2004 Putnam exam, problem A1. First, let me present it in casual language. It's about basketball. DeAndre has been working hard to improve his free throws. Early in the season, his free throw percentage was below 75%. But by the end of the season, his free throw percentage was above 75%. Was there necessarily a point during the season where his free throw percentage exactly equaled 75%? Now let me present this in a little more precise language. DeAndre keeps track of S of N, the number of successful free throws in the first N attempts of the season. Early in the season, S of N was less than 75% of n. But by the end of the season, s of n was more than 75% of n. Was there necessarily a point during the season where s of n was exactly 75% of n? While this problem looks to be quite difficult, this is considered to be one of the easier problems asked on a Putnam exam. Can you figure it out? Give this problem a try, and when you're ready, keep watching the video for a solution. Before I get to the solution, I want to mention a fun fact. DeAndre Jordan improved his free throw percentage tremendously from 2015 to 2018. He went from around 45%, which is one of the worst of all time, to about 75%, which is nearly league average. The lesson is that hard work and practice can bring tremendous results. This is true in sports, and it's also true in math class. So how do we solve this problem? Well, you might think the answer is no, because free throw percentages can skip over values. For example, let's say you make one of two free throws your free throw percentage will be one half or 50%. Now let's say you make the next free throw, so you're two of three. Your free throw percentage will be 66.6 .6 repeating. Notice that your free throw percentage was below 60% and then above 60%, but it never exactly equaled 60%. So why would the case of 75% be any different? You might think that it would be possible to skip 75%. But remarkably, the answer is you cannot skip 75%. DeAndre's free throw percentage must equal 75% at some point because 75% is equal to 3 over 4. Why does it matter that it's equal to 3 over 4? Well, here's the proof. Suppose the free throw percentage never actually equals 75%. This is going to be a proof by contradiction. This means the success rate has to jump 75% between n and its next shot n plus 1, you have to go from below 75% to above 75%. So let's put that in a mathematical equation. First, the free throw percentage will be below 75%. Then on the very next shot, it has to be above 75%. Now we can simplify this a little bit. Since the free throw percentage increases, the shot n plus 1 has to be a successful attempt. The number of shots made on n plus 1 has to be the number of shots made on n plus 1. So the numerator becomes s of n plus 1. So now we have a set of two inequalities. Now we're going to change 75% into 3 over 4. Let's split these two inequalities. Now let's cross multiply on each one. 
So here's what happens on the left-hand side, and here's what happens on the right-hand side. So let's simplify the right-hand side. It's going to simplify to be 3n is less than 4 multiplied by s of n plus 1. So notice that 3n is in the middle, so we can now combine these two inequalities. So now we have 4 times s of n is less than 3n, which is less than 4 times s of n plus 1. But this is impossible. This inequality means there is an integer 3n that's in between the consecutive integers 4 multiplied by s of n and 4 multiplied by s of n plus 1. It's not possible to have an integer between two consecutive integers. Therefore, we've reached a contradiction. And so we must have that the free throw percentage did exactly equal 75% at some point. Now, remarkably, we could actually generalize this proof. The answer will be true for any percentage where we have a fraction k minus 1 all over k. The proof will work very similarly. It's a proof by contradiction. We suppose that we never actually equaled that percentage. This means we would have to jump the percentage between two consecutive shot attempts. So we set up our inequalities as before, and then we do the same sort of algebra. We're going to cross multiply each one, and then we're going to simplify. Then we would have an inequality where there's an integer that's between two consecutive integers, and that's impossible. Therefore, we can conclude the free throw percentage must have exactly equaled k minus 1 all over k at some point. So while this problem isn't easy, this is one of the easier problems for the Putnam exam. Thanks for watching. These math videos, available for free on YouTube, build confidence for students and inspire mathematical discovery for viewers around the world. They have over 100 million views and the channel has over 1 million subscribers. Please subscribe for free to get the newest videos and email me a math topic or puzzle, presh at mindyourdecisions.com. If you so choose, you can check out my merchandise on Teespring. You can check out my books listed in the video description and you can support me on Patreon. Thanks for watching and thanks for your support.